Did you know that everything you could ever want to know about astrology is literally written right in front of us in nature and the plant kingdom? Stick around for an example. Hello there and welcome back to the Chironium. My name is Tyler Panor and as you can see um, my arm is in a sling and so if you watched our last video and I did that little skit, um, you know, it wasn't just a joke. I mean everything else in the skit was a joke but I really did hurt my arm so um, that's why I'm sitting here in the sling right now. My partner Mamie and I, we wanted to create this series where we combine astrology and the plants and they really do go together hand in hand. If you're an herbalist, studying astrology is going to help you immensely. And if you're an astrologer, studying nature, the plants and the elements is going to also help you tremendously. So in the previous video, I mentioned that we split up the two parts of this series. So this is going to be just the plants and planets videos and that's how it's going to be from now on. We're going to have um, the video where I go out with my film camera and capture you know the essence of a sign and then we're gonna have this series here the plants and planet series where we uh, talk about the correlation between uh, a sign and plants and then also a planet that correlates to that sign with the plants as well so thanks to all the new subscribers we've been having a blast just creating different videos and content and sharing them with you guys and getting to know some of you so after this video if you enjoy the content you see consider subscribing to our channel Channel. We're, we're going to be making a lot of different kinds of videos based on astrology, alchemy, herbalism, music, the arts, creativity, storytelling, all of those things you're going to find here on this channel. So as I said at the beginning, everything you could want to know about astrology is literally written right in front of you. Think about that map that you look at on your birth chart and it has all the signs and all the planets. It's literally a two-dimensional map of symbols that represent the world we are actually looking at. So when we go out and we're looking at the plants, we're looking at the fire, we're, you know, feeling the air and, and the water, all of that is what astrology is actually talking about. The core pattern of astrology is representing the actual patterns that we see in nature with the seasons, the daily cycle, and how the elements interact with one another and how they have different forms. So the example I gave you guys before for the fire signs, we have the spark of the fire, which is Aries. We have the light and the flame of the fire, and that's Leo, and then the charcoals and the heat and the embers that shoot up, which is the Sagittarius side. So turning your studies of astrology to nature, I always say nature is the proof. Nature gives you the understanding. The things in astrology represent what they do because of what they are. And all of that is expressed out in nature. So I remember when I came across this understanding of astrology and I started to look out into nature, it totally transformed my understanding of astrology and it literally gave me the clarity and the proof and the understanding. It gave me all the teachings of astrology in a tangible way, in a way that I could see, feel, understand and walk with in my daily life. So during the times of each sign, certain plants come out and they actually correlate to that sign. They have that signature of that archetype and that sign within them. So we gave that example of the nettles with Aries. So you can start to see how these signs are not just personality types, they're actually living archetypes that exist all around us in the plants, animals, the elements, and nature itself. So one of the plants for the Taurus season is horsetail. And horsetail has a very simple growth pattern and it's very high in minerals. And Taurus is the mineral kingdom itself. Mamie and I decided to go to our friend's house and they had a bunch of horsetail by this little pond that they had. So uh, we'll head over there now. All right, so it is Taurus season and one of our plants most connected with Taurus and the fact that it's related to earth and minerals is horsetail. And horsetail is one of our oldest plants. It's, I'm pretty sure it's been around since the dawn of time kind of thing. Very prehistoric and it is chock full of minerals, super high in silica especially. And so high in fact that you only want to harvest it at a certain point in time so that the mineral content isn't too much for the body to handle and process. Um, so like these two, 
these here are gonna be too far gone in, too far gone in the season for harvesting but you want to find one that's at a 45 degree angle which Tyler will share, share more about that later in its relationship to Taurus <laughs> Sequoia. <laughs> um, so you can see now that its fronds are about 90 degrees ish away from the stalk, which means that it's past its point of harvest. So let's see if we can find one that you would harvest if you were to be making medicine. So this little guy, you can see it's a young shoot, and all of its fronds are about 45 degrees if not closer to the stock. And this would be one that you would harvest for its mineral content. And you would just cut down at the bottom. And um, I've seen folks extract each frond from it or just chop it up really nicely if you were to make like a tincture or a hair rinse for its mineral content or something of the sort. It infuses really well in vinegar. And so the minerals can be extracted in that way. And so we saw this really lovely patch of horsetail down at a friend's pond and we just wanted to take y'all here and show you and we'll talk more about it back in the office. So I hope you enjoyed that little segment. Uh, Mamie and I were at a friend's house. We had a great time helping them out with their gardens and that little area down by their pond there had uh, that real spring green color going on during that time of the day. And I even got a couple photos as you guys saw. So for me, I'm always looking for those little insights. I call them the little Chiron keys. And I find them every day in the littlest of things. Sometimes they're very big things, but I always find those little insights. And one of those things was when Mamie was talking about the time that you harvest horsetail is actually when the little prongs are at that 45 degree angle that's usually the best time to harvest them and then I started thinking well it's related to the sign of Taurus and the middle of Taurus is 45 degrees away from that zero degree point of Aries so you know the beginning point if we you look there's 30 degrees for each sign so 30 and 15 puts you right in the middle of the sign of Taurus um, so that was just something interesting. I always like looking for those. So thought I would share that with you guys. So during this time right now, we're currently transitioning from the sign of Taurus into the sign of Gemini. And so if you look at this initial pattern that we started, we had Aries and Taurus, and those are both ruled by the planets of Mars and Venus. Mars for Aries, Venus for Taurus. And in a way you can think about it as this Mars action that gets going during the beginning of spring. Everything's kind of starting, all those little, the buds of the trees are pushing out you know and the plants are you know pushing their head up and out of the soil and then during the tour season we see the Venus qualities coming with the flowers start to come out and that absorption that receiving that the plants are doing they're receiving the light they're receiving the water the nutrients from the soil and they're building their body and then as we transition to the sign of Gemini which is an air sign we see now all the pollen start getting released into the wind and then those pollinators start to come around the bees the birds everything starts to buzz and hum during that Gemini time at the end of spring. So when we were talking about Venus, it was pretty easy to decide on what plant we would share, and that is the rose. And the rose has those signatures as well. We see the beauty of the flower, but we also see that Mars signature with the spikes and the thorns that they have. So they tend to come out during the end of the Taurus season is when you see them, especially like the wild roses, they really start to come out. They attract all those pollinators. So it's that transition time from Taurus in to Gemini. And so for Venus, it was pretty obvious which plant to choose, which was the rose. And Mamie has a really close relationship with the rose. If you look at the Chiron's apothecary symbol, it's an upside down rose that is with the symbol of Chiron. So with that, I think I will pass it over to her and let her give you her teachings on the rose and how she relates to it in her life. So Mamie here, uh, founder of Chiron's apothecary, and today we're gonna be talking about Venus and the rose. When I think of the rose, I think of it as this universal symbol of love itself, right? We've been giving and receiving roses from our loved ones since I don't even know how long. That rose, it's that symbol of romance and sensuality and softness in the heart 
and beauty itself. It's that symbol of femininity and unlocking that deepest place within ourselves that might be stuck or caught in the mind and not being able to live from a place of heart perception. That's when I see the rose coming in. When I'm thinking of the rose and you know wild roses that start blooming at the end of Taurus season here in the Pacific Northwest or the roses that we grow in our garden, I think of just that queenliness that they carry, right? Like you see a rose starting to bloom and everything in you just wants to stop and be like, oh, wow, so beautiful. I think of the gardeners who've been growing roses, you know, award-winning roses who spend hours each day pruning and fertilizing and nurturing and serving these flowers as if they were the queen themselves. And I think of the wild rose and how the bees just adore them when they start to bloom. And I think of that feeling that I get when I see that first rose blooming. That old saying of stopping to smell the roses, you know, it's that representation of taking a moment to just acknowledge the beauty that we have in this life and the beauty that we carry within ourselves. So when I think of that aspect of the rose, I think of its relationship to Venus, who is our ultimate symbol of sensuality and femininity. And it is that representation of how we give and receive love and what or whom we're attracted to. And the rose is exactly the same thing. I mean, it is the most physical representation of Venus that I think we have. It's just beauty itself and love and the heart. And it's so simply that, that it's hard to say even much more. And so in herbalism, although there are a lot of physical properties of the rose, you know, it's astringency and it's coolingness, I'm not here to really get into that, but to rather share about the rose on an energetic medicine point of view. Um, as a plant spirit ally or whatever you want to call it, it's often worked with in flower essences, which we'll be talking about in a minute, or as a cordial with brandy and honey. It makes an amazing honey, just the petals, so good. Um, as tea, you know, in heart opening tea blends, you'll see that across the board in herbal medicine. And it's oftentimes recommended in those moments of intense grief or struggles in a relationship or struggles in a relationship with yourself where you're not able to come down from your mind into your heart and you don't know what it means to be open-hearted. You know, we've all been there. And so I've worked with the rose a lot over the years, whether it's from being stuck in my mind and not being able to get into my heart or healing from a broken heart from a relationship or losing a loved one or a friendship unraveling, even grief of loss of place. I've moved around a lot over the years and sometimes I can get hard leaving the land that you've grown to love over a course of time. And so I've seen the rose for me become the ultimate healer of relationship itself. Whether that relationship is to myself or with someone else or with a place, an animal, you know, whatever it may be, it is that healer of relationship. And so with working with the rose, I tend to be drawn more towards the wild roses in teas or in an infused honey, which you could then add to a brandy and make a really delicious cordial, or in a flower essence, which is exactly what I'm making here in these videos. I'm putting together the rose and the water and the sun and creating this energetic medicine to be diluted and more potent in each dilution. And those medicines work specifically on that energetic piece of our Ourselves and go straight to those emotions that are stuck and need to be moved. Help us to live from this place of our hearts. It is the ultimate representation of plant spirit medicine. And that is exactly how I got started as an herbalist, is what was making these flower essences and the wild rose. I paired it with rose quartz, I think. And the wild rose was one of my best sellers. Um, and I'm no longer making them now to sell because I'd rather show you guys how to make it yourselves. But this is a beautiful and easy way to work with rose medicine in your daily life and just kind of tap into that subtlety of what it means to live from your heart. Because our minds speak a lot louder than our heart does, right? So we have to listen a little bit closer to hear what our heart is saying sometimes. And this is the perfect remedy, ally, medicine, whatever you want to call it, to get into that place. And so with all that being said, the rose is one of my top remedies for calming the nervous system, not necessarily on a physical level, but from getting us to that place of mental chatter to heart perception. And I speak about this specifically in my ebook called Thriving in Chaos 
how to nourish the nerves when the going gets tough. And you can download your copy at chironsapothecary.com slash learn more. And I would love to hear about your experience with the rose, maybe your experience with Venus or your perception of all of this. Um, maybe you've learned something today or it struck a chord in you to share a story. Share that with us in the comments below and let's create a conversation around beauty because we could all use a little bit of that right now. So thank you for joining me today and talking about the rose and back to Tyler. So I hope you enjoyed that segment from Mamie there. She gave us some really good insights and teachings about the rose and her connection with the rose as well. So I hope you got some good insights and have a way maybe where you can go out and connect with the rose in a deeper way and apply the uh, simple astrological teachings that we gave you as well. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like down below. And as I said earlier, if you really enjoy this type of content, consider subscribing. And if you have subscribed already, and haven't hit the little notification bell, uh, be sure to click that and then you'll be notified when we have new videos. Um, and all of those things also help with the whole YouTube algorithm and help us, you know, get the video out more and get it recommended more. Um, so sharing this video is really helpful as well. And we really appreciate the support growing this channel and we enjoy making content for you guys and hope you're getting something good out of it as well. So be sure to leave us a comment down below letting us know what you liked about this video. And also, um, what questions do you have around astrology? What things are you curious about? What are you trying to learn about? And the same with herbalism as well, so that Mamie and I have some ideas on what videos we can make for you guys coming up here. So thanks again for stopping by, and I hope you're staying safe and healthy out there, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Did you know that everything you could ever want to know about astrology is literally... Again, combining the astrology... What was I saying? On the day. <sighs> You're filthy. Are you having fun? While we were out in this beautiful... Um... <laughs> Hey, Mamie here. Um, my voice gets really high when I say hey. Hello, I'm Mamie, and I'm the founder and herbalist over at... I'll just... I got it. Often than not. It kind of reminds me of like when you first started doing videos and I couldn't go anywhere near you. I love and hate this all at the same time. Well, let's, let's keep trying. Uh, this is so frustrating. <laughs> I Thanks, babe. <laughs> Hello. So, Mamie here today, and we're gonna be. Nope. Hello. And its relationship to the rose. Nope. We're gonna be talking about rose and its relationship to the rose. I just get in the flow. Hey, y'all. Mamie here. I'm the head herbalist over at Chiron's Apothecary. I'm the only herbalist. Why am I saying head herbalist? So Mamie here, and I am, and the, the <laughs> take a breath, in that sacred feminine, femininity within us, <laughs> you know, put the rose in oil and rub it, rub it on my face. <laughs> Alright, so take three, or four, or five, not quite sure at this point, just like, hey rose, no, don't want to say that, <laughs> losing my voice. All right.